Hello, boys and girls, teachers, parents. I wanted to um, have a chance to speak with you since it's been several months. And I didn't want to just write a letter. I wanted you to see my face and my expressions. So um, Pastor John is kind enough to videotape me and I wanted to tell you that I don't want to say goodbye. I don't want this to be a goodbye. I want this to be a farewell, shalom, until we meet again, peace be with you. That's what I want this to be because we are right now in a time where I think peace is the most important thing we can be experiencing right now, a sense of peace. And why is it that I feel that we need to have that peace? I said, because you know what? I feel that there are four ways that somehow we're all being affected. And they all start with the letter D. We are either experiencing doubt at this time, like, does Jesus really care about me? Does he really know I wanna be outside and play? Does he really know that I wanna be at the school with my friends? Does he really know that this is not normal? So we, we are experiencing doubt. And some of us who are not experiencing doubt may be experiencing discouragement, feeling sad, feeling like you can't even describe what you're feeling. But maybe asking yourself, mm, can I really handle what's going on? Can, can I really take this? Is this, is this going to be okay? And then some of you may be finding ways to get distracted. Like you don't want to be thinking about what's really happening or what's not happening. So you're turning to maybe your books or your Netflix or your game probably not Game Boys, you guys, that was years ago. I don't know what you call your electronic, but you guys know what I'm talking about. The, the electronic uh, games and things that you use to have fun, but can lead to just wanting to escape. And then there's some of us who may be having thoughts in our minds and saying, well, is that true? No, 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 maybe that's true. A and we can call that deception. Listening to the voices. There's, remember, there's two voices, right? The voice of the shepherd, and the voice of the deceiver. And so I thought to myself, what is it that I could share with my AAA family? And the bottom line is I didn't want to talk about myself because there's only one thing that's worth talking about, and that is Jesus. And so I thought the last opportunity that I was going to have was going to be about my favorite person, the most important um, presence in my life. And I wanted to share that with you the very last day that I would be able to talk with you. So how is it that we can overcome these, these four Ds, either doubt, discouragement, deception, or um, distraction? And you know, the Lord gave me a song this morning. I actually prayed, I said, Jesus, what do you want me to tell them? And you know what he said? <laughs> Holy Spirit said, tell them to trust and obey. Wow, that was so awesome. So because it sounded like that song, I actually looked up the song. Trust and obey. So let's take the first one, trust. Can you really trust someone that you don't know? Mm -mm. We're, we're taught from the time we were children, don't trust a stranger. You don't know who they are. Don't talk to them. Don't accept, that. don't accept anything from them. So the first thing we need to do is trust Jesus. So how does that happen? What does that look like? How do we learn to trust Jesus? Well, we have to get to know him. Well, then what does that look like? How do we get to know Jesus? Well, you know what? We just ask, we just tell Jesus, Jesus, you know what? I want to get to know you. I want to get to know you. And you start spending time in the word and you, and you pray that the Holy Spirit will come and teach you things. You know, you don't have to rely on your Sabbath school teachers and your pastors as wonderful as they are. Boys and girls, parents, we could go to the Lord and say, teach me today teach me and he's going to do that and he will do that because he's so faithful so we first trust him how do we do that by knowing him and then to know him and you've heard this before to know him is to love him and when you love him that's when the obedience part comes in it's not because you are obeying him so you can gain his love guess what he loved us before we ever loved him that's not what it's about. It's because of our love. You know, like when you, you, you have a friend or a teacher that you want to please or your parents or a family member and they ask you to do something. I know <laughs> you sometimes people will ask children to do something 
and they start fighting over who's gonna do it, who's gonna get that object, or who's gonna be the one to help. They, they do it because they love that adult or that person that's in their life. Well, that's the way our response should be to what the Lord asks us to do. And then it, after we love him, we can't help but talk about him. We can't help but share what he's done in our life. And you know, there was something in the, um, I think it was a year ago at uh, Atholton Church. It was in the bulletin and I loved it so much I actually cut it out. And I keep this in with my Bible study, with my lesson. Um, and I just thought this was awesome and it was worth sharing. It says, anything that dims my vision for Christ or takes away my test, my taste, sorry, my taste for Bible study or cramps me in my prayer for life or makes Christian work difficult is wrong for me. And I must, as a Christian, turn away. That we must turn away. In, in other words, if there's anything that just has us take our mind or our eyes off of Jesus, then that thing is not good for us. We don't need to ask someone and say, mm, should I do that? If you know that it takes you away from Jesus, then it's something that we have to ask the Lord, take this away from me, take the desire away from wanting to do this. So boys and girls, parents, I wanted teachers, I wanted to, to just spend these last moments sharing with you that we will meet again. We will meet again. Jesus is coming soon. There is no doubt. He is coming soon. And we're going to meet in the clouds of glory. We're going to meet in heaven. Okay? Um, you know, I don't want to start singing side by side. We start, you know. <laughs> But the truth is, that's exactly what we're going to experience. And that's exciting to me. That's why I didn't want to make this a sad thing. I wanted to make this farewell an exciting thing. Because Jesus is coming. And we're going to see each other again. And we're going to experience what we have been preparing you boys and girls for all your life. The reason why AAA exists is because we're supposed to be pointing you all to him. And the reason we want to point to him is so that you can experience him face to face one day. And that is the absolute truth. That is the ultimate truth. God's word is the ultimate truth. And don't let anybody tell you differently. Don't let anybody tell you differently. So I'm sending you all a big hug. You know how I love to greet you in the morning when you would come to school and say goodbye to you when you would leave the school. But just know that I will carry you in my heart wherever I, wherever I go. And I'm never going to forget you. And I will, rec hopefully I'll recognize you in heaven. But if not, I would hope you would say to me, I'm such and such. Do you remember me from Athelton Adventist Academy? A and we will rejoice together. Okay? So with that... Shalom.